Hey everyone, so just a quick one today. I wanted to respond to a comment that I thought was interesting. So in uh, in this video, um, one about eggs, so this is a short based on a, a response I did to this um, lady who likes Ayurvedic and vegan diets, I think. Um, someone called um, Tamalia um, says, why should we be eating fiber when we cannot absorb it? Probiotics need fiber and we need probiotics. So let me respond to that first. Um, yes, humans, so what we think of as our own body, what we think of as pure human, is actually majority bacteria when we look at it in terms of how much DNA is represented, right? So most of the DNA in your body is actually not human DNA, it's bacterial DNA. Most of that resides in what's called the gut microbiome. All this is completely true. The idea that we need fiber to seed that microbiome, I would say it's like 90% untrue or maybe 100% untrue. We don't really know. Um, but we do know that there are plenty of, there are cultures such as the Inuit, such as the Maasai, a few others who spend certain seasons or huge parts of their life not consuming any fiber at all and do just fine, right? And we also know from people who've told their story about getting microbiome testing done. Paul Saladino did this a couple of years ago when he was purely carnivore. Also others, when you actually look at people who've been on the carnivore diet for a long period of time and you test their microbiome, they have as much diversity as anyone else, as people who eat a lot of fiber, et cetera, right? Someone, I think there's a keto channel that did carnivore as an experiment, and they also found that when they did carnivore, their diversity went up. And by the way, that's the only way we can test whether someone's microbiome is healthy or unhealthy, is we tend to look at the diversity. That's the only metric that pretty much everyone uses, right? If I asked you what's the most important cell in the body, what would you say? Would you say the cardiac cell, the heart cell? Would you say the hep hepatic cell, the liver cell? <laughs> would you say some kind of immune cell? Uh, the answer, my friends, is none of these. The answer of the most important cell in the body is stem cells because they can become any of those things and more. We are born producing stem cells, but unfortunately, as we age, our production of stem cells goes down. Fortunately, there is a way to increase our endogenous production of stem cells even as we get older. To find out more, click the link on your screen. Now, the second part of this is what made me want to make this video. She says, also, the lady said that you need fiber to absorb proteins. Now, this is just such an idiotic idea that I wanted to sort of just, just encourage you to think about this sort of statement in terms of first principles, right? So what I said in my response to her was, look, um, what is the period of our life when we are most dependent on proteins from making muscles, from making bones, from making everything? It is infancy by far. From zero to six months, we will double our weight. The average human will double their weight, maybe a bit more. And from zero to 12 months in the first year of life, we will triple our weight. During that time, the infant is breastfeeding. <laughs> the little baby is not getting any fiber at all, or at least shouldn't be, according to all of the recommendations from pretty much everyone. Now, that also sparked me to do a little um, Google Scholar searching. Um, and I found, you know, there are are some studies indicating that in certain contexts, feeding soluble fiber as opposed to insoluble fiber might increase the protein digestibility of certain vegetable proteins, not animal proteins. Animal proteins are already fully digestible. So when you talk about improving protein digestibility, that's purely a, a sort of plant protein paradigm, okay? But uh, so forget it, if you're a meat eater, it's not relevant to you. But most of, for, even for plant eaters, if you increase fiber, mostly you are decreasing the amount of protein you can get out of that, right? So this is one study that looks at that. Um, this this one talks about soluble versus insoluble fiber. Um, this particular one is also interesting. Um, so this one found that noodles from wheat flour with 85 extraction rate had lower protein digestibility. Um, rising wheat bran dietary fiber, so as you increase the fiber, you inhibit the protein digestibility non-linearly. So it's like a, a, a U-curve, right, in terms of all that stuff. Most of any, almost everything in biology is not linear. There's, there's some kind of a, a U-shape to it or a J-shape or something like that. Um, beta sheets and beta turns are not relevant to this, um, to the fiber discussion. But again, that fiber, um, it, it basically made it, a little bit harder to absorb the amino acid tyrosine as well, okay? So in other words, there's plenty of data, and I wouldn't say plenty because this is not, to be honest, it's not as much data on this as I thought there might be. Um, but all the data we have indicates that, A, if you're getting your protein from animal sources, fiber is irrelevant. You're not gonna increase 
you can't get more than 100%, right? It's not going to happen. Um, and number two, even if you're getting your protein from plant sources, when you increase fiber, by and large, you tend to decrease protein digestibility. There is some evidence showing that soluble fiber might increase uh, protein digestibility. All the rest of it will decrease protein digestibility. Okay, so those are some thoughts. I uh, hope you're having a great day. I'll see you in the next one.